Welcome back to Kitty Items. If this is the first video you're watching related to Kitty Items, then make sure that you watch the previous two where I walk through what Kitty Items is and how to get everything installed and set up. In this video, we are going to talk about how to get Kitty Items running. So we're actually going to see it running locally. In our case, we're going to start on Testnet. And for those of you who don't know what Testnet is, Testnet is a clone of the main live production flow blockchain. It's also live, you know, it has, you know, the same multi-node architecture, all of that, but it's a testnet environment, meaning anyone can use it to test out contracts, to test out their apps, make sure that they work correctly before deploying them to mainnet. Usually as a developer, what you would uh, normally do is start with the emulator, develop locally using an emulated version of the flow blockchain running on your computer. Um, and then once that's working fine, you would deploy that to testnet, try it out on testnet. And once that's working fine and you'd, you know, load test it a little, uh, get people to try it out, then you would deploy it to mainnet. In our case, just so that you can see everything running and just so that we can set up everything we need right off the bat, we are going to try running Kitty items on testnet. Then we're going to move it to the emulator, make some changes, show you how everything runs on the emulator. And then we're going to redeploy it to testnet. So you get the whole flow. So to start off and get the KDI items running on testnet, we really only need one command, which is NPM run dev testnet. This will make sure that all of the pipings are in order. And if we haven't created a testnet account, it'll guide us through creating a testnet account first. So without further ado, let's get onto that. So let me clear the terminal, keep things clean and we'll do NPM run dev testnet. This command will clear any previous launch processes. This is if you're coming back to, you know, to, to Kitty items that you've already launched it, or you have the emulator uh, going, it's going to also walk us through creating a testnet account. So I'm going to walk you through this flow as well. So we're going to click on this link and what we see is our faucet page with our public key pre-filled. So how, how this works is. The flow CLI in the back end is generating a private and public key pair and pre-filling a URL for us to go to the faucet with our public key so that we can go register this public key on testnet, create an account and get that account address and paste it in here so that all of the environment variables are uh, filled in correctly. So let's go back to our faucet. You'll see that our public key is pre-filled. We have our signature and hash algorithm, which are pre-filled as well. We don't need to change. We can click on I am human and we can click on all the fancy red fire trucks. Um, ooh, I think some are trucks. Mm, okay. Doesn't need to be a red fire truck and click on create account. Now what's this doing, as I said, is it's registering our account and funding it with 1000 flow tokens. So it'll take a second and it'll output a zero X address like this one right here, which we can copy and paste in or our script to use in our environment variables. So now it's deploying the kid items contract to testnet and we'll be able to see it live on testnet in just a second. It's also running some necessary transactions to get the admin account set up. So yeah, um, just going to wait for that to run. All of this is running in, in the back end via the flow CLI. We'll see later how to run a transaction using the CLI as well. Um, but let's just wait for this whole build script to, to finish. So you see, we set up the NFT storefront, um, account and the kitty items account, and then we have the API server running on localhost 3000, which we can log using PM2 logs API. And we have the storefront web app, uh, running on localhost 3001. And again, we can, uh, tail the logs at we're using NPX PM2 logs web. These are two links that we can use to inspect our newly created account. And if we want, we can click enter or yes to get the logs for all processes getting tailed right here live. So before we do that, I wanted to show you the Flowview source account so that we can see the contract on testnet. So let's open a new tab. You'll see here we have 1000 flow. And if we click here, we have this contract deployed to our account, which is the KD items contract. You'll see that this contract imports other contracts 
And the reason why we don't have them on our account is because these are being imported from other accounts that already have these contracts deployed. And that's the beauty of the blockchain. We can compose off of other uh, contracts, build on top of them, right? And that's what we're doing here. We're importing the non-fungible token contract. We're importing the metadata view contract, which is the, the standard way through which we expose metadata in our non-fungible token metadata standard. And, and we just build on top of it and we create a kit items contract. When we develop locally on the emulator, we're going to have to deploy all these contracts ourselves because there's no, you know, live contract or live account that, that, that has these, but on testnet, these, these accounts already exist or these contracts already exist. And we just need to deploy one new contract, which is the kid items one. Feel free to, to, to look through this. Uh, the great thing about cadence is that it's pretty uh, readable and there's not much uh, rocket science to this. We can have a dedicated video just to, to go over the cadence side, but there's so many tutorials already available. And I highly recommend you check out the cadence playground. If you want to get familiar with cadence and go through all of those tutorials, Jacob Tucker has also a great uh, series of videos on learning cadence. So for now, we're going to just focus on Katie items, get that running, and you can dive deep into cadence using the existing resources that we have. Awesome. So we have our contract deployed. We have Kitty items running on localhost 3001. So let me just copy this. The reason I'm not clicking on these links, you, you can, is I have a couple browser windows and I'm afraid that it's going to open it. I mean, I'm not afraid. I know that it's going to open it in the wrong browser window every time. So yeah, here, so Kitty items, hooray. We have it running locally, localhost 3001. This is the Kitty items sample app. And we have two useful links, one to the documentation, one to mint our first kitty item. Uh, we can click on mint our first item, and this will take us to the admin portal because the way that kitty items works is we have the admin side that mints the NFTs and then the users can go to the storefront, buy the NFTs and put them up for sale on the marketplace. So that's the flow. So all NFTs originate from the admin account and are minted from the admin account. So to do this, we are going to log in to the super secret portal of the admin account with the super secret password, kitty items, which is also outlined here, log in and we can click on mint an item. Again, this is on, um, this is running on testnet. So transactions are a little bit slower than they would be on the emulator, which is another reason why we want to use the emulator when we're quickly De debugging and iterating quickly. So in our case, we just minted a great green fishbowl. Number zero, hooray, awesome. Now, if we wanted to actually see this and try to purchase it as a user, we would need to log in. So let us log in here and you'll see that to log in, we have a couple options. This is FCL in all of its glory. FCL will detect what wallets a user has and what options a user has. And in my case, it's Blockto, which is currently the most popular wallet and Lilico, which is a, a non-custodial wallet that's currently an alpha, but I'm going to use Blockto. I want to walk you through the flow of if you don't have an account, right? Cause again, what we the testnet account that we created earlier was for the admin side. Now we're logging in as a user to actually purchase this NFT and then post it on the marketplace. So to do that, we need a wallet. And this is why we're using Blockto. And if you don't have a Blockto account, it's super easy. All we need is an email. So we're going to do kitty, kitty items at mailinator.com in my case, right? We're going to register. Let me also copy this. And we're going to go to mailinator. You use your real email so that you can get useful updates from Blockton. And we're going to paste the code in and it's going to prepare our flow account and we're going to confirm. And that's how easy it is to create an account on flow using Blockton. So now we have a test on account. And the cool thing is the, the flow to create an account on mainnet is exactly the same. So if you go to an app on flow and you need to create an account on using Blockton, that's literally how long it takes to create an account. You'll notice we also only have 0.001 flow 
So as a user, we want to have some flow to be able to spend and, and buy, um, items, right? In this case, we minted uh, a green fishbowl. So we want to be able to purchase this. So how do we get flow to buy this green fishbowl for five flow? We need to go to the faucet. We still have this old tab open where we created our admin testnet account. We can click on fund account and just paste in an address, which I will take from here. Boom. Paste that in, fill out another annoying captcha. Just kidding. They're, they're really fun and click on fund account. This is just going to send a thousand testnet flow tokens to an existing testnet account. So in the first step, we created a testnet account that we generated via the flow CLI to be used as our admin account. Now we are funding our user account that we uh, created using Blockto, which is a wallet to be able to interact with this NFT storefront and marketplace. So the account is funded. We see this is also updated live. I didn't touch anything, which is awesome. And yeah, we are ready to uh, purchase this fishbowl and make our first KD items transaction. So we go here, we go to purchase. What will happen is the Blockto flow will pop up. So you see how Blockto, we're on testnet here, uh, creates this, shows the script. We're going to approve it. And going to initialize. It's going to seal. We also have it happening here. It's complete. We have 995 flow, meaning we purchased it. And now we own this green fishbowl. We could also set a price here, list it, uh, but I'll let you play with that. This is the testnet flow. And now is the time to actually go from a testnet deployment as is porting it over to the emulator, making some changes to the web app, to the backend, to the cadence contracts and redeploying it making sure that it all works on the emulator and redeploying it to testnet. And that's what we're going to do in the next videos. So, uh, I'll stop this one right here and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.